to feel helpless because awareness only goes so far, you know, like I know personally for me being an influencer and being online and having, um, having, having people, you know, watch my page and me posting about things. I think that's that's step one, you know? Um, but I think a lot of influencers feel like they're them just posting about it isn't enough. And it's very performative, which in a way it can be. Um, but I also feel like, I also feel like look at what black lives matter did and look at what that awareness stirred up, you know? And I think if we, I think, I think we learned a lot of lessons in 2020 and I think one of them is that the government works for us and that if we raise our voices about something I mean if we get a, if we get a hundred thousand signatures on this petition to register sex offenders of all levels in all states um I mean the, the it has to it goes straight to Supreme Court they have to make a ruling on it um and we can all do that ourselves and the way that we do that is through awareness so I think I didn't realize the power in it before, and I think I realize it now. Um, and I think if I could tell my old self one thing when I used to watch that commercial is that I can still do something about that and not and not just feel bad about it. Like the whole purpose of posting and the whole purpose of awareness is not just the bad feeling. Like that bad feeling is actually the weight of the responsibility of good people to do good. And what you do with that weight defines you. And so I'm taking all the weight that I have in my in my body and throwing it at this cause and throwing it at the things that actually are action items that can change our world and can change, can, can save children. Like the, the prevention side of it, the education side of it, the awareness side of it, and also 60% of um, the children that are sold into sex trafficking come from foster homes. So we really got to, we really got to dive into the foster care system. I have three attorneys on my team that are looking into even how we find foster homes, how we, you know, bring these foster children to the fun events that we want to bring the aftercare children into and how we develop relationships with them where, you know, we make sure that they're in a safe, loving space and that they're not a number on a CPS sheet and that when they go missing, it goes unnoticed. Yeah. Um, so I think it's 50, 50. And I, I, I think all we can do at this point is, is educate people that way, that um, this isn't a sad, this isn't a sad abuse video um, that we want you to just be shook by. This is, this is something that we can literally change like this year, next year, like in our immediate future. And that, um, that, that sad feeling that they have, they can they can turn into appreciation and accomplishment and joy and success in, in something that's so important and near and dear to all of our hearts. Well, if nothing else, save another life or keep somebody else from this happening to them. I'll tell you briefly, right. uh, just real briefly, last year before I moved to Montana, my wife was shopping at Target in Upland, California. It's a sleepy little community. It's a beautiful new Target. It's a beautiful new center. And uh, she went through the clothing section with my two little girls, four and six. And uh, she noticed there was a a couple kind of nearby her. So she, uh, you know, just continued to watch uh, and shop throughout the store. She made it back to the toy aisle. If you know Target, that's in the very back. The couple showed up there again. Two aisles later, they showed up there again. They had no basket, nothing else. And then she got freaked out, so she went all the way to the front of the store to the medical supply area, and the couple showed up there again. She wrangled up my two kids, went to the front, and the couple followed her all the way to the front, and then they got into line to pretend to pay, and my wife grabbed the manager and the security and pointed them out. They turned around, stared at her, pointed her in the eye like, we got you, and fled the store, fled the parking lot. And what was really creepy about that, thank God she had the intuition that maybe these people were following her. When they rewatched the videotape from the store, those people had been following my wife for a total of 45 minutes. And they said on a couple of occasions they could have nabbed up the kids, but they felt that they were probably after her instead. This is a real thing. She lived it. The, wow. police, the police came and wrote a report. And uh, it wasn't the first time something like that's happened. And they fled the scene in the parking lot. They were gone, gone. You know, um, this this can that's happen so to anybody. Scary. 
So scary. Crystal, I, you know, I, I just know that this message is so big, and I hope we get this out to our listeners and people can forward and provide this information to other people. The website you mentioned is our, O-U-R, R-E-S-C-U-E dot org, ourrescue.org. And then, um, Chris, are, are we driving traffic to your social media um, pages or, or where are you getting the word out personally? The, the word uh, that I'm getting out personally is on my social media. So it's Chris Network. It's spelled um, like Crystal, my first name, C-R-Y-S, and then it's N-E-T-W-O-R-K. Um, and posting the petition on there every single day. Um, and I have talked with OUR about putting the petition on their website, so I think that will be up on there as well. Um, and then we are going to create another event on the OUR website. Um, and with that event, it will have the petition attached to it um, because we can attach links there. So in order to attend the event, whether you want to attend it by Zoom or you want to attend it in person, um, it will be here in Southern California again. Um, and you should also go on the OUR website and look for events in your area. They're currently happening, and if, if they're not happening, I mean, I am a, I'm a single mom from Orange County, and I have two under two. I have two jobs. I made it happen in the matter of two and a half weeks, and I also was out of the country for one of those weeks. So if I can do it, literally anybody can do it, um, and I, I – encourage you guys to throw your own events because it's one of those like if you build it they will come situations um because you just have to register on there create an event and um people are on there watching and um they had over 64 million hits on their website this last week Mm. so all you have to do is register for an event throw it up there and and people will come and um they're, they're ready and they're willing and they're 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 angry, um, and we're going to turn that anger into doing something so good, so good for these kids. I, I wish that all the negative energy we've had in 2020 politically was focused on doing something good for people that really, really need the attention and the support. Kids can't help themselves, and, uh, you know, there's been a lot of political backlash in a variety of groups, and, uh, you know, any one of those groups could stand to support this a little bit more wholeheartedly and focus on something much more important. Um, you know, I, right. I, I just want to close with this because we could probably p- talk a lot of politics too. Um, I want to close with this, Crystal. I know you to be a successful person. You've, you have a great life. You have great friendships and people around you. I, I don't want to say that this is an inconvenience for you, but this is a shift from your normal, happy, successful life. Obviously, you're passionate about it. And I'm so happy that you're doing it. And uh, I, as a mom of two, single mom, um, and I, I hope that people hear your passion and understand how important this is. Coming from somebody that has been a success, you didn't just grab a charity because it was the thing to do. You clearly had done the homework, and that's what I know about you. So um, thank you so much for sharing your story. We're going to post this up immediately and share it as often as we can. And I'd only ask if you can stay in touch with us and maybe come back on. Of course. Thank you so much for having me, and thank you so much for giving me this time to speak about something that's so important to all of us. I, I appreciate I appreciate the effort and the awareness that you're putting in as well. Well, I, I got to say I'm super uncomfortable with just knowing this with two girls, but, you know, if we don't share the message, it's not going to get out, and we could easily hide it, but um, it, it's very uncomfortable, but we want to do what we can. So I'm going to let you go back to your day. And um, take care of yourself, and best of luck to you with your event. I'd be there, but as you know, I don't live in California anymore, so I will push my friends that way. (laughs) Thank you so much, and have fun in Montana. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. It's up to you. The door is open wide. You could be larger than life